Climate Institute is pleased to launch this first of what is now an annual Global Climate Leadership Review. 2011 uh, was a year with a, a wall of white noise of political and economic instability, both here and abroad, but it was also a year of real progress uh, with growing clean energy investments uh, and carbon markets. There was real progress here with the passage of the Clean Energy Futures legislation, but also with the Durban UN meeting. But we also have seen, as CSIRO have just reminded us in last days, that uh, the climate challenge is getting harder and harder to address, with greenhouse gases at record levels uh, for 800,000 years. In this review, uh, we cover what Australia should be doing, but also look at the rest of the world. We look at uh, how the uh, Durban uh, discussions went, who are the, some of the key players. We profile the EU Commissioner Connie Hedegaard uh, and look at the role that uh, the EU and AOS has played in actually uh, helping move that uh, negotiations forward. We look at a paper which we've discussion paper which we've just released about how Australia can link its carbon markets in a more intelligent way to boost global ambition by, by working particularly around the Pacific Rim with half of the world's pop, uh, carbon pollution in a way in which we can help boost global ambition, uh, not just putting uh, linkages in with existing schemes in the EU and in New Zealand. But we also look at the issue of carbon competitiveness uh, and with, the, with our key partner GE, we've rated once again the carbon competitiveness of the G20 countries. And Australia, unfortunately, uh, in this index, which we've also backdated to 1995 for the first time, uh, is the only country amongst the G20 countries to have uh, slid down uh, the rankings uh, in that time. Australia is going backwards at a key time when it should be going forwards. It's 16th amongst the G20 countries. And that's partly because of its uh, emissions intensity of electricity sector, uh, the exports that we have, uh, as well as broader inefficiencies uh, and the way in which we've had some declining investment in education and infrastructure. These issues are compiled into the Carbon Competitiveness Index, uh, which we've not only put in this report, but have an, an interactive website, which we hope will be easier for you to use. So it's an important uh, review. I encourage you to have a look at that, look at the issues uh, that are raised within this. But at the guts of it, it's a challenge for Australia on, on, to lift its game and its carbon competitiveness, but also how it cooperates with other nations in facing the climate challenge.